everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this designer handbag gift bag. I'm calling it a designer one because I was actually looking online at gift um, handbags myself and I saw this one which I really like. It's a mulberry handbag. It's in leather and I just really loved this pocket detail that they had on the outside and that's my interpretation of it and I think it's turned out really well. I had loads of these key ring rings. Um, I did share them quite a while ago and I just thought they'd worked perfectly for this one. Obviously that's gold and they've got the poppers and things here and it's leather but I don't know I think it works really well and then with my one here I just show you it's got velcro and then you've got your pocket just there. I probably will put a little thumb um, what do you call it bit there just so you can get into it or even maybe cut more of a a semicircle over that bit there but for me I probably won't use the pocket it's purely just decorative but it is there you know to put a gift card in or whatever you want it's a great size you can see inside there just put some tissue on top and this one measures eight and a half by three by seven I believe it is let me just double check for you this one is oh six and a half so it's a great size and uh, yeah I really enjoyed making this one so let me show you how Okay, so the papers I've used are from the new first edition Bloom and Wonder. So you'll see there, it's just that nice watercolour kind of effect. And I'm using that again on this one, but I'm changing the background colour. So just pop all my bits there that I'm going to need. The stamp set I've used as well. And I really love that touch, actually having it on your bag. So it just says, wishing you a day of happiness. I've done that in heat embossing. I'm doing the same, but this time I'm doing it in white. So I've already gone ahead and embossed the same sentiment there and this is from the very well used and this is the Dovecraft this is the essentials one and there's also the occasions and um, it's really nice let me just take it out of the packaging just so you can see it a bit better but you just got yeah just really nice sentiments again always linked below so I've done one of my handles you see there and I've already put the little um, eyelets there on the bottom there's my little key rings and everything we need and I've got my black velcro dots there and it's the brand velcro again I'll put the sizes down they look about 16 mil to me so right I'm using two sheets of 12 by nine and a half now the reason it's nine and a half is because that's the width of the little cardstock that I'm using I've just brought it into 12 but if you want to do 12 by 12 you can do yours are just going to be much taller so you want to score both pieces along the 12 inch side first of all you want to score eight and a half and eleven and a half then rotate and score at three so if yours is now 12 that's how tall yours is going to be because this three inch line will become our base okay then rotate it back again along that 12 inch side and now you want to score at 10 in fact you could have done that before but it's a bit easier having this three inch line as a bit of a guide but score at 10 um about one inch up from that three inch score line it's just going to help you just fold the sides that's all okay so just roughly come down I guess I've got my five inch marker here if you want to exact that's where I, oh, I've just scored next to it but there you go okay and again I've done that on that one there haven't cut that one like I usually do so that's fine I'll do that in a moment then for the handles you want two pieces of one by twelve and along the one inch side you want to start scoring from one inch so I've got my one inch marker here just score all the way down to 11 inches just down through the middle and it will just allow us to fold but not have the fold right the way down the front there so my fold there say that's the one inch goes all the way around and finishes at 11 just so you keep the fronts there free from any score lines so do that then you will need a piece of six by one and a half this is optional but what I've gone ahead and done is I've just come up a quarter of an inch on both ends here and then drawn a pencil line because that's where we're going to add our glue and stick it behind our pocket. And then I've come in one inch on each side making sure it's halfway and just put a pencil mark. And that's where we're going to do our hole punches. But if you put all these pencil marks in place now and then heat emboss or stamp your sentiment, it's better to do that before we attach it to the pocket because this may warp slightly you can see mine's just got a slight bit of warping but once I now stick that to the pocket and then we stick all of that to the bag it will flatten again you don't want to be heat embossing this once you've stuck it onto the bag because you're probably just going to you know end up warping the bag itself so just do that first and then for the pocket itself again you know you might not want to do yours as big but I quite like having all that pattern on the front but this is a piece of 12 by 6 so it's just one sheet 
I'm just using the other half of that pattern paper okay and then you just want to score along the 12 inch side you want to score at 5 and 10 and then just burnish until you have a pocket we're going to run some tape down there and uh, seal it all together and then these are just decorative pieces that I'm going to stick at either end here and then I've got this one that's going to go along the bottom there again it's entirely up to you how you do this but if you do want to do the same I've got a piece of six by uh, oh, it's three eighths of an inch and then these two pieces here are half by five which is the height of the pocket okay so let me just remove the scoreboard okay so first of all we'll work on the bag and get that done so you just want to Grab my bone folder, just fold and burnish all of your score lines. And then we're going to do a bit of cutting. So you'll have your half inch tab here on the right hand side. Along the bottom here, you want to cut up both of these score lines. Like so, and then this one here, just up to that first one. This end piece here, you just want to remove completely. And then I just fold that one up and just cut. A wedge off of both of those and then again remove that one and remove that one okay and do that again on the other piece now we need to glue this one onto here so I'm just going to grab my glue and I'm just going to add all the way down the side and then just sit this one over the top making sure you line up your base score line here get that all straight everything else should line up but if it is a little bit off at the top at least you can trim that so just give that a minute to stick and flip the whole thing over fold in this side here and again add your glue bring this side over and it should all lay down and line up with everything perfectly again just make sure that's all secure okay, now you'll start to have this shape and then just decide if you've got a preference to the front or back and then you want to stick the back one down first add some glue onto the side here Again, I'm just going to do it on this one before I stick it all down. So just on both of your side pieces, fold those both in and then you just want to add glue on the front and then just bring that over. Make sure everything's nice and square and you can just go in there and just spread out all of that glue. Okay, and then now you've got those score lines, you should just be able to push out the sides and just squeeze down just so it starts to form that shape. I want to add the extra score lines there, which I do sometimes when I do a folding flat, a folding flat, a fold flat gift bag you can do, but I don't think you really need to with this one. The idea is this is an open style, so it's got more of a bucket bag kind of um, style to it, and you just put tissue paper in it. Okay, so now that's what we have. So next we can work on the pocket, because all of this now gets stuck onto the bag. So open this one up and you just want to add some tape I find tape better because if you use a liquid glue it may spread out further than you think inside and if you have intended to put a card in here or a gift card it may not fit I mean a gift card should be fine because they're obviously considerably smaller but if it is a card then um, you know if the glue's kind of oozed out here for example you wouldn't be able to slide something in so just pop some tape down there just on the two sides of this middle bit and then you can just fold that one up Okay, and then I'm just going to run a thin bead of glue down here and here. And then I'm going to bring in these purely decorative, no other need for them other than the fact that I just think it breaks up the pattern against the grey that I'm using there. Also, another reason why I've chosen these colours is I've actually had these for a while. They're those kind of colours that I don't really go to. I'm very bright and very colourful and that's what you see, you know, with most of my cards and, you know, the 3D projects that I make. So I have a lot of greys, I have a lot of browns and blacks and I just thought, you know, I need to start using these and these kind of handbags, more chic designer style, actually work really well with those kind of colours. So, yeah that's what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to trim off anything overhanging there and then I've got this one which is just going to go along here 
Okay, and then I'm just going to grab my Velcro dots. You don't have to add two, but because it was six inches long, I thought it could hold two of the Velcro dots. So I'm just going to put one there and one there. Just bring those over. Okay, and then, again, this is purely optional, but I've put eyelets down here, just decorative. You see there, just done three on each side. So all I've done is just grabbed a pencil. I'm eyeballing all of this, but you just want to find the, the halfway between where the, you know, your flap comes down here. So I'm going to do one there, then halfway again there, and halfway here. So that's where I'm going to do those three. And then again, halfway, halfway halfway. Okay, and I'm just going to use my cropper dial here, but any hole punch will do. But this has the eyelet squasher, squeeze, pliers. don't know actually what you call the, uh, the process, but um, I'm just going to remove all of those. And I've got all of my eyelets here, and I'm just going to find the white ones. This is now when I realise I don't have enough, but I'm pretty sure I do. Okay, so, lesson to myself, make sure I count how many of my eyelets I have before I use them. I honestly thought I'd have loads, but I only have seven white left and I need eight because I've already done two on that one. So I need to have another two on the handle because I don't really want to change it up too much, but I thought I might do white, silver, white, and like that just to break it up. But now I'm thinking maybe I have two, actually, I'm gonna have two silver on the back handle because you're not really gonna notice that. I really want these to all be white because I think it works really well. And then I'll have my white handle on the front and then the silver on the back. Look, I've got one there. I cannot, I've literally hunted and I can't see any other white one. So never mind. I need to order some more. <laughs> so, I'm going to keep them to one side. So I'm just I've already got this all set. I've put them all in because they kind of sit in there and it just makes it a little bit quicker. So I'm just going to pop them in there and just squeeze those all. That's that now all done. And then I've got my piece here and I'm just going to run some glue. I mean, if you want to rub the pencil mark out, you can, but the idea is you stick it just slightly above the pencil line. But this will now run perfectly. With that. Oh, I've just realised I need white on here as well. Oh no! <laughs> Maybe I change it up with a different colour altogether. Okay, I'm going for these kind of golden ones instead. So let's get those because I've got plenty of them. There we go. So we're going to have gold there and then white. It still all works. At least it's kind of all uniform so I haven't got any odd ones randomly. Okay so that's now stuck and then again I just want to hole punch this here. Let's check that is, no it is right. I'm not going to come up just a little bit above those. I'm going to do that one there. There we go. And then I'm going to grab these golden ones and again just squash those. Okay now grab your bag, sit this over the top, see it looks so good against the bag, I love this style. And you want to make sure you get it in the middle so just again use your ruler to make sure that you, so it should be one and a quarter from the score line, yeah. You want to make sure you got one and a quarter and then just draw with a pencil through the eyelet so you know where you're going to be doing the next ones because this all needs to line up. And then you can squeeze the bag together and punch through both or if you if you would rather do the top ones and then line it up. Actually I think I'm going to do, do it that way. Let's have a look. Just want to check. No that's okay. Just really pinch it together and make sure it all lines up. Okay. And then I'm just going to add some glue. I just realised what I've done is those eyelets have thrown me, but you don't want to, don't seal, you know, put these eyelets on yet until you've stuck this on. Then you put the eyelet on and then it will go through, you know, both pieces. So my bad, it's still going to work, but 
yeah, ideally, because now I've got to try and add my glue with the kind of, um, you know, uh, the dimension that the eyelets have now given, because obviously they're slightly raised. Like I said, it's, it's still all going to work, but don't put those on just yet. Um, just wait and then put them on. But it will still stick fine. And I like it, I keep all this lifted, okay, so it kind of flaps. But just spend a minute sticking that all down, and then now add your, um, your eyelets. So I'll put a little thing up just to say don't do it just yet, just in case any of you follow literally step by step. But now you will have this. It looks really cool. So I'm just going to clear this away because I'm running out of space. Okay, so now I want to seal the back ones. So I'm just going to pop these on here. And I'm going to need another two for my handles. I'll list exactly the amount of eyelets you need. So again, I'm just going to seal those ones. Okay, so now you can grab your key rings and you just want to open them slightly and just as you slide it onto this, just bend it ever so slightly. You don't want to cause any kind of markings on your card and then just slide it all the way around until it hooks on. Okay, so I'll just do the other one again. So again, I'm just opening it slightly, bringing it down and then just bend it so it can go back under and then just try and keep it as flat as possible and it will just work its way around. Okay, I'm just gonna do that with the back. Okay, so now we've got those, and then with the handle, I'm going to show you how to do, actually I'll do that first because then I can put them all on. So where you've scored, just burnish that score line up to where you can, and then if you just kind of pinch it right at the end of the score line, but then bring it back on itself, you'll create that kind of shape. Okay, a bit like an arrowhead there. So again, I'll just show you on this end, so just pinch right up to the end of the score line, and then push it back on itself and you'll get that look. Okay, now also, I should have said, before you do that, you want to get something that's circular, optional, you don't have to do this, and just draw around it on the ends there. And I just thought it looked quite nice with the, like a curved end rather than a kind of square. And then you can just cut around it. And then if you just fold them over each other, or don't actually fold it, but just so it can uh, lie down on the end of it there and just do the same. Again, so now they'll be like that shape. And again there. Now I didn't glue it, you can if you want, but I find that once you've got it in that shape, it won't be able to come out of that shape. So, you know, do what works for you, but I don't think you actually need to. And then you're gonna have the f oh, you're going to have the fold facing you and it's going to be like that but if you carefully start to curve it you won't get any buckles and just go back again from that end back to the other because you're basically just stretching that cardstock but now you once it's shaped you've got your handle and then again just grab your hole punch you might have to open it up a little bit just so it can be a bit flatter to go in there. And just get your circles within those sections there. And then add your eyelets again. So now I need to fold, find another couple of gold ones. So I'm going to have the white ones on the front. So again, you just want to prise one open very carefully and then slide that in. And again, just kind of work on a slight angle. You don't want to bend the card and just slide it through like so. So I'm just going to work my way around and do all of those. Okay, so there are my finished bags. I'll just bring this one up just so you can see it a bit better. Really love it. Shame that all the eyelets aren't white because that is what I intended, but it's a, it's a minor thing. I doubt, you know, whoever gets this is really going to notice, but it's got such a nice look about it. I really do, you know, really like these ones. And uh, yeah, I hope you do too. So if you have, as always, please give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing so you get to see more and uh, I'll be back again soon with another fun tutorial. Thanks for watching. Bye.